You're muted. I don't think I am anymore. Hopefully I'm not. I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, it's late. I think everybody's going to get a little bit of a pass here. Uh, You can talk about the late night Reds edition. This is it. Uh, We just got off the airwaves. We were settling ourselves into bed. And sure enough, the Cincinnati Reds uh, decided they wanted to prove Trace Fowler right yet again. I'm tired of being right. It gets old being right. But once again, I said within 24 hours, there would be a deal made. Sure enough, it didn't take more than an hour and a half. Craig, good to see you. Nick, glad to have you back. Uh, Jay, Jay, Jay Mir, I think is that's how you say his first name. Jay Mir Candelario is a Cincinnati Red, uh, according to multiple sources now. It just is pending a physical. Uh, we'll get into it. We'll discuss what this means for the Cincinnati Reds and where they go from here. But certainly, this uh, this answers some questions, but opens up more. Let's go. I, uh, I just I, I had one more click to put the podcast up, and uh, I I think Craig was the one who sent it to me, and I was like, well, let's get back on the air. Uh, you know, no time like the present. Uh, how about that? Got, How about we this? Make sure the morning edition is uh, up to date as much as we can, right? I mean, we didn't we didn't want to let you sleep tonight. We got to get you some more editing work in before uh, before it's too late. Yeah. <clears throat> but this listen, is exactly, what, what, this what does good. this mean? I mean, at the end of the day, what does this mean? How do we feel about it? Listen, I you look back at the guy's baseball reference page or the back of his baseball card, however you decide that you want to get your information and your resources. I'm going to lean on you, Nick, and perhaps you, Craig, a little bit on what fan graphs of the world points out and the types of things that we can come to expect. Uh, if anything, it does... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it it uh, it wouldn't be a show without probably discussing what the hell this means from an infield perspective. Um, I don't know. I, I I will say this. I think that it is uh, if you take out one year, one single year from this guy's career, um, there really wouldn't be any hesitation for me at all about what you're going to get. You're going to get above average hitter at the plate, and you're going to get a guy that's got some some versatility. Uh, from an infield perspective, but I guess from your overall reaction, Craig, Nick, uh, either one of you want to start, just your initial thoughts here as we get uh, going on what this actually means. Well, big thing I'm waiting on is is how much money, how many years. Sure. I mean, that that's such a huge determining of how I feel about that. I haven't seen it reported yet. I'll keep you know checking, and if I know our chat, I mean, our chat is undefeated. They'll let us know right. if if that gets you know confirmed we're on there. That makes a big. Uh, difference to this deal i mean this is a one or two year deal man i, I love this i mean this is uh, uh definitely a guy that makes the reds better now how much better i mean i think that's debatable um who's the real jamer candelario um this was a guy that was yeah i said it like 20 minutes ago we were on the air this was a guy that was non-tendered by the tigers um you know just a, a year ago this time um, but he had a great year, and then the, the two years prior to that, 2020 and 2021, he's a really good hitter. Um, you know, I think he, he 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 I think he tapped maybe even a little bit more power into to Great American Ballpark. But the Reds are better, and uh, you know, for the whole, are the Reds going to do anything? That's one, two, three legitimate big league players that the Reds have signed and and committed a decent amount of money to. Well, I think one of the things we've talked about with the pitching staff this entire offseason is that you can never have too much depth, right? And we saw it last year with injuries, uh, not only in the pitching rotation, but in in the uh, infield and outfield as well. So if nothing else, this gives you flexibility to continue the conversations that maybe you're already having regarding Dylan Cease, maybe regarding some of the other pitchers that have been referenced uh, on social media <clears throat> regarding uh, Reds having interest. So you know, whether that means that Jonathan India has been a piece that's been discussed and they wanted to have that flexibility, or maybe it means that one of the minor leaguers that they had projected to come up in the next year or two is going to be a part of that deal. Um, and they want to have that flexibility to be able to move on to that um, and still have the depth to be able to support the infield for years to come. So um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is the last domino to fall, obviously, but um I, it, to me, it kind of signals that maybe there's more on the horizon. Um, I'm not sure if anything's out there yet, but projections had this um, had Candelario in the 10 to 12 million range, 
Um, again, we'll see once the numbers come out where that actually falls. Um, 10 to 12 million feels like a lot to pay for flexibility. So, um, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh man, what up, Elliot? Or Jonathan, I should say. It appears he doesn't have internet. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Uh, there, there's already speculation out there what the years look like. I know you had mentioned that's a big deal for you, uh, Nick, on what that exactly looks like. For those that are wondering, it's it's already being speculated that might be uh, two years, uh, 16 to $17 million. Um, that's, that's the thought. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, we'll find out as we progress. Glad to see that Jonathan finally got himself a little bit of internet there. Um, any, do you have anything to add, Jonathan, here before we uh, we keep it moving? Yeah, I didn't want to stay up too late uh, or stay, stay on too long. I don't want to bother you guys. This is a professional show, and I know uh, I'm going to try to be professional as I can. Um, yeah, you can. I, I'm going to give the pass. You can trade Jonathan India now. He's gone. Bye-bye. Uh, it was fun. He's a leader. And I, and I love them. And, and, you know, I, I I'm going to wake up my parents. I know I am. I'm speaking way too loud. So I'm gonna try to quiet that down actually. Um, but listen, Jonathan India, he was a leader of men. He tried his damnedest. He came out there and he was whizzing balls into the stands left and right. He's not a very good defender. I tried to defend him. I tried to, but you know, at the end of the day, he's just not very good. He's not a very good baseball player. He won that rookie of the year. Some are saying it's a Mickey mouse rookie of the year. I'm not saying that some are saying that like trace and Nick, Probably no, Craig. Don't put words in my mouth. Um, no, no one said this. It, well, they, I think you were all saying it. I think you all hated Jonathan India, and that's fine. You guys got your wish. Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit serious, Nick, so please please don't laugh. Um, Condelario is going to save this team. The Reds are all the way back. I was, I, was I, I had all the doubt in the world in Nick Kroll. I didn't believe in him. I was proven wrong. I'm proven wrong. The Reds are all the way back. At 1 a.m., at 1 a.m., when C. Trent was lying out of his teeth, telling me we were going to get all, all kinds of different pitchers. Now... <laughs> We have Condelario, and we are all the way back. All the way back. That's all I have to say. God bless. <laughs> I think the take biggest takeaway from this whole thing is that Jonathan India still lives with his parents. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. It's you know, it's unfortunate right now. Especially, it's going to be even harder uh, when I lose my job with the Cincinnati Reds. But uh, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's good as gone. I think. I think Crawl did Crawl at Reds Fest say he was going to play first base. Is that right? Uh, that was until Condelario decided he wanted he wanted to uh, yeah. wanted to play for the Reds. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's what happened. Right. Okay, uh, really, right. really, really, really quickly here, uh, yeah. Nick Craig, and now that we, the fact that we have Jonathan here with us is even better. I here's the yeah. thing. Um, in in all in all seriousness, it it literally leaves no room, right? Like I I guess at this point. If if anything, did you lose? Do you, do you lose leverage now with 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 India trying to move him, or was it already a foregone conclusion already in the baseball world that they were going to move him regardless? And you just knew that, it, and it only takes two teams to start to try to create some leverage, anyways, right? Uh, for Jonathan India, I, I guess is uh, without getting too crazy, is there any chance Nick and or Craig, and obviously Jonathan can speak for himself when we get through there, is there any chance in the world that he stays? I don't, I don't I think so. I mean, I, it's, it I tell you what, man, shout out to the people at Fangraphs who have already updated the red depth <laughs> chart. Are you kidding me? This is elite stuff right here. So this is the lineup. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can go full screen here. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. But there you go. So, yeah, I mean, there's your lineup, you know, Friedel, McLean, Steer, Candelario, Strand, Ellie, Marte, Benson, Stevenson. That's a, that's a pretty good one through nine, boys. Uh, I'll tell you that. And then uh, this is not putting in Jonathan India, uh, Stuart Fairchild, Jake Fraley, and Luke Maley. Um, so, I mean, this is, a, this is a, a really good lineup one through nine right now. What's the, what is going on? He's getting in a workout for his new team. Um, what what I like about this, and, and Nick Crawl talked about it the other day, is um, having switch hitting and flexible players, right? So what Condelario brings is the ability to play potentially every position in the infield from either side of the plate. And, you know, 
we had a number of players last year, the Reds did, that quite frankly had to be platooned. And if you looked at Condelario's splits, he hit lefties and righties pretty well. I mean, his splits are not very different from both sides of the plate. So um, when you add that kind of ability to be able to plug him in, no matter who's on the mound for the opposing team, um, and give guys days off, um, maybe sit them during slumps, whatever it may be, I think Condelario gives you a lot of flexibility. Clay Snowden. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh <laughs> I did not expect this many people to be awake. Jonathan India, dude, go get your plane ticket. You're out of here, brother. <laughs> dude, we gotta got be somewhat. Dad. We gotta be I, somewhat careful here, just in case it, that doesn't happen. One and two. Uh, <laughs> I am. Th does anyone else feel like kind of bad about this? I mean, uh, it's almost like it's almost like the guy didn't really do anything wrong. It just just happened to be that he was the odd man out um, well, I, well i know you don't feel bad out of all the people to not feel bad i know it's not you and i know it's not nick either and i'm sure detroit and oakland clay i'm sure he wanted him gone too he might go well, to detroit i am um, as somebody who's watched more tigers baseball over the past three years than anything yeah. that's healthy i've always been a huge king um jamer candelario fan i know nick and i talked about him after he got non-tendered yes two <laughs> years ago and we were on that. So it's it's all just coming back now. But, no, I think it's a great ad, and it's good for Jonathan India that it happened today because now he has an extra couple months to learn the outfield. He has an extra couple months to figure out a different position if need be. Um, at the end of the day, this was a weak free agent class, and they went out and got a bat that was one of the best available. Like, I don't see an issue with that at all, especially if you just plug him in at DH, um, you know, if – India plays kind of more of the Senzel role, you know, that's fine. Uh, more of the infield Senzel role, I guess. Somebody's going to get injured, right? We all know that. So at the end of the day, really good teams add good players and you figure it out in the end. Um, that's what the Reds are doing. We just aren't used to seeing it. Elliot, have you been using that hat as a seat, brother? I mean, what the fuck? Is this? That thing's lopsided. How lopsided can you possibly get that thing, dude? Trace, if you don't know, they only put Elliot in to take a pitch at the softball league. So he just leans in, wears it, walks down to yeah. first. This is actually a nacho helmet. And speaking of nachos, Jonathan is going to be eating a lot of them because he's not going to be seeing a lot of playing time, and he's going to be with the regular folk over there at Great American Ballpark in the concession lines, just buying nachos like the rest of us because Trace and Nick wanted them out of the city, and they got their wish. They got their wish. Now, granted, Condelari is a better player. I'm not going to sit here and say India is a great player. I think you guys were really hard on him. I think he was a leader of men. I really do believe that. You guys don't believe it. Trace said being a leader and friendship and all that stuff doesn't matter. I think it does matter a little bit. But saying that, India is going to get a raw deal here. He's good as gone. See you later, pal. It, it, it sucks. And, and, and Condelario is a better player. So, it, but, but at the end of the day, India has gone. I, I, I assume you have to trade him here. Do you think, do you think you're going to – so my question here, do you think you're going to trade him for a starting pitcher or do you think you're going to go for prospects? You're not going to get a starting pitcher of any value back for Jonathan India. Well, yeah, but now it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I mean, it's, it still matters. Like, it, he – Jonathan India still has value. I know you're down on him right now. Um, but what what's the likelihood? I, I don't see India as like the only player from the Reds in whatever move it would be. Like I think right. he's part of a package because the Reds have enough, you know, it's kind of a shame champagne problems here where they have enough of everything prospect wise that they can trade a prospect with Jonathan India to get something. Um Hey, let, let, how about we just get wild and talk about Randy or Rosarina coming to the Reds right now? Yes. I mean, let's yes. do it. <laughs> I mean, we already know that the White Sox are planning on completely rebuilding and moving on from some of their younger players. So maybe it's an opportunity to bundle him with some of the prospects that have been conversated about uh, for Dylan Cease to move him uh, along with some of those prospects uh, to the White Sox. But yeah, I'm with you. If we can get a a Glasnow or Rosarena package deal. Let's get that going. So I, you you look at the lineup here right now, and um, I think that the best thing to do 
is take Spencer Steer out of that lineup because you know you can plug Steer into multiple positions, all right? And then you move Jake Fraley in, and then that's your lineup, okay? So you have Spencer Steer just, just sitting out here on an island. Someone's going to get injured by the time opening day rolls around and Spencer Steer slides in. That's just how it works. There's always injuries in spring, and it's good to have that depth. Um, so really, I, I think you're maybe, like, I don't know, you could still keep Jonathan India. The the I think the bigger issue with keeping Jonathan India would be trying to keep him relatively, you know, happy and not and not be an issue. Like that that's more the issue than just keeping around. I mean, look, there these guys also there's still a ton of guys that have options, and I know we don't want to ever send um, any of our established players to the minor leagues. But that's what good teams do. Good teams have major league players sitting in AAA at their disposal. So when a player gets hurt, you're not calling up um, Mark Payton or you're not calling up uh, Henry Ramos. You're calling up a major league player. So, I, I mean, everyone has options except for Candelario. I'm Candelario and Stuart Fairchild are the only players that do not have options right now. Everyone else could be sent down to AAA. To be honest, one thing I'm looking at this and I'm, you know, it looks great on paper and, you know, you have the Fraley or Benson or whoever is going to be on the bench steer. That's an awesome bench piece. I hope Will Benson plays a lot of center field this off season or, or works on center field a lot because I know we don't want to have the conversation, but I don't think that there's a non-zero chance that TJ Friedel is not the player that we saw last year. I think that was like the ceiling of what we see. And if he comes down to being more of a blah player like that, that's okay. The lineup's good enough that you can withstand that. But how much better can the lineup be if you could put a Benson in center field and then get Fraley in this lineup with Steer or so, you know something along those lines? I'm just saying I don't think TJ Friedel is like automatic three plus win player. I mean, he was four, four and a half wins, whatever he was. I don't know if we're going to see something like that a lot again. Now, he benefited a ton from that first row, second row at Great American Ballpark home runs scraping over the edge. In reality, I don't think that he has that much power. Like, I, I, I'm just saying I'm not – there has to be some plan to center field if DJ Friedel does not produce at the level we saw last year. Well, it, it doesn't have to be TJ Friedel. It could also be – Will Benson could regress. Yeah. It could be Spencer Steer could regress. It, it could be Matt McLean regresses. I mean, I don't think we think that happens, but uh, I, I think two years ago, we didn't expect Jonathan India to regress, and he regressed. I mean, that, that does happen. This just gives you more, more flexibility overall. I still don't think you have to just trade Jonathan India for the hell of it. Um, I, I do get a little concerned about how you could – uh, keep everyone um, happy and content in a situation like this. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, look, you, you go to spring, you have a really good competition in spring, and you kind of let them fight it out a little bit. Yeah, I just he, – here's the, here's the crazy part about all this for me. It's similar to uh, – wh why don't we just hit the whole bingo card while we're doing this whole time? And it's 1.30 in the morning on the East Coast, so why not? You can get really crazy. Um, it's like when you when you have a stature on a team and you've kind of put yourself in a position that you feel like you're a leader, quote-unquote leader, options are great. Uh, you could say sitting the bench and, and, and you know playing and a marginal role is great. But same the same same way that that we had some issues with kind of the way that we could that we were going to be presented with opportunities or not really opportunities but uh, for lack of opportunities with Joey Votto, is I think the Reds kind of put themselves in the same position as they might with Jonathan India, and I'm not saying that those are the two of the same situations because they're not, but but it is the elephant in the room when you have a guy that's the quote unquote team leader, the captain of the team, and he's and he's and he's the odd man out. I mean, if he's, you know, that's great for guys like Stuart Fairchild, right? Kevin Newman's of the world. Um, Kurt Casale. You can kind of get away with that, I think, right? Like, we, we all understand that not everybody gets to play every single day or even comes close to playing every single day. 
I don't see any world where Jonathan India would not not only accept that role, but even would 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 even want to be somewhat a part of that. Like it would almost, in my opinion, be. And I'm not trying to say that Jonathan India is not a team guy because I I I do think we need to slow down a little bit on the fact that oh Jonathan India this that and the other like. He was a rookie of the year. He's been nothing but great for this franchise, so I don't really want to keep killing this guy. It's just that I think we can be realistic in saying he he's not going to allow that. Like I I, I genuinely think he would like boycott and sit out before he before he decides he's going to take on a role that we're suggesting that he that he could possibly have on this team. Like, and then at what point is that a distraction? I don't know. I mean, I I know I'm putting a lot of like negative vibes towards him and the way that he might act. But I also think that's somewhat valid. Like, I, I don't think it's fair to Jonathan India to sit him on the bench, you know, four times a week. Yeah. I, you just don't, you don't know if you'd be sitting him on the bench four times a week. You don't know if there's injuries, you know, all, all those, those kind of things. Um, it, it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see what they do with Jonathan India. Because I, it's just it's it's so weird that, that Nick Crow came out with these comments that they're gonna look at playing Jonathan at first base, and then they acquired Candelario like three days later after they went so long without ever even hinting at ever moving Jonathan Nitty off of second base. That's the thing that I I find the most interesting. I guess we'll we'll find out the answer to this. I think in relative short order. I mean. Does anyone else think there's any chance they keep Jonathan India? Well, first off, about like GM comments, front office comments, like they're BS. And there's no reason that they should tell us the truth because they don't have to. And if my boss asked me if I was looking for a new job, I'm going to say no. Like I don't have to tell the truth at all moments in time. I don't owe, they don't owe us anything. So saying whatever they want to say about Jonathan India a few days ago doesn't mean anything. We should just stop interviewing GMs, period. But do I think that Jonathan India could still be on this team? Yes, because I don't think his trade value is going to be too different now than it would be in spring training. Or, um, you know, we saw what happened with Gavin Lux last year. He went down in spring training. Maybe his value would even be higher. I think Jonathan India in a trade by himself would, you know, get a fine return. Now, if there is a package out there that you could package him with a prospect to go get an a higher level pitcher, then yeah, do it. But going into spring training or even going into the season with India is, it's just to me, a added value. I don't think that it's a negative. Now you're going to have to sign. If you're looking at the roster right now on YouTube, you have to pretty much replace Stuart Fairchild with some type of Mauricio Dubon, like utility guy who can play all over the field. Like you kind of need one of those at this point with some flexibility. I know Spencer Steer fits there a little bit, but you need a. Uh, I you know I, I I guess you can move McLean to short or Marte in a pinch or whatnot. Like there there's enough pieces to move around. I would like to have like a legit super utility guy, unless you just go out and get like a big time bat. One of those two things I think is needed here. I I, I don't think Stuart Fairchild would would be on the opening day roster if if they're going to keep adding like this, like Stuart Fairchild and Jonathan Indy on the opening day roster, strike, it could happen, but I, I don't feel like that's going to happen. I couldn't agree more, Clay. I couldn't agree more. I would I listen. And I mean, no disrespect. I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be as very serious as I can. This is a very serious show here. Um, I would send Stuart Fairchild. Uh, I think they're starting. Uh, I, I believe there's doing some sort of baseball league. In Pakistan, I'd let him play with Philip Irvin over there. And I, I think he can make a lot of the money over there. But unfortunately, I just don't think he's a very serious baseball player. And I say that with love and respect. Uh, but I think there's better options now. Jonathan India, I do think there's a chance they keep him. Like everybody here has been saying, uh, injuries plagued this team, right? Last year, it's no secret. I think injuries have – I made this point off the bench earlier. Uh, I guess that was yesterday. I, I, I think injuries have killed the Reds the past several years. I don't hate having depth. Now – Again, I don't know how much depth you really need or how much depth you are going to have in terms of like actual decent players like Jonathan India is. But again, if somebody goes down, having Jonathan India as the backup to the backup, I love it. Is there a world where we're focusing on the wrong infielder that's going to move? 
I mean, is there a world where maybe they move one of the other young infielders that maybe has a little bit more value in one of these packages and India still remains on the team and his, you know, reported conversation about moving to first base isn't a lie. Maybe CES is in these conversations or one of the other young guns. I don't think so. No. I mean, I, I, I just think uh, I hate to be this guy and keep saying, Hey, remember what Trey said about two hours ago? Remember, remember when I said that 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 Nick Crawl like tips his hand when he talks, and if you just pay attention and just use you use your logic, use your brain, just just try to listen to him for half a second. Uh, he he said something that that just wasn't true. Okay, he just lied, and that's okay. He, he's allowed, like Clay said, he's allowed to lie. Uh, here's the one thing that we're not talking about. This all comes down to what you can get back for uh, Jonathan India, and I like I said, I think better just to sit here. Maybe we talk about what what uh what jameer candelario brings to the table and that's probably the better topic of conversation than sitting here talking about jonathan india because i i don't mean i i just brought it up really quickly not to sit here and to, to fret on it all night long is this guys um what you lose out on is what you can get in return for jonathan india sitting jonathan india and letting him be depth behind guy behind this guy behind that guy is all well and good but if he doesn't play a whole lot then at some point you know his trade value is going to go down. That's just inevitable. So, anyways, fo fo focusing back on this um, with, with Candelario, I think ultimately it, it it definitely gives them an opportunity to have a piece there in case CES isn't maybe what we hope he's going to be. And I'm not trying to downplay what CES can or cannot be, but there's also that point of what Craig just mentioned, which is, Hey, if some of these guys don't step up, no one's really talked about CES. Everyone always brings up uh, McLean or Steer or TJ Friedel or Will Benson is taking a step back. It's possible that CES does that as well, but ultimately, at least you have a little bit of depth here uh, with Candelario. So um, I don't know if anyone have anything else to add from his perspective. I've not really, unfortunately, I've not seen him play a ton. So I'd be lying if I said that. Hey, I've seen this guy play a lot. I've looked at obviously his his baseball reference. I've looked at it is uh, the fan graphs of the world and things of that nature. But uh, if anyone else wants to speak on on seeing him play, that'd be great. Yeah, I I legit watch a lot of Tigers and I have for years. So I saw him. I've probably seen him play a hundred games or something. And um, last year, I know the metrics looked good at at third base, and he was good. He's n typically not a plus defender. Like I did not see that at any point in previous years. So. Um, I don't know what got into him last year, and he didn't play a lot of first base until last year he started to play some. Um, to me, that's kind of – he's more of – I would prefer him at DH than in the field. In terms of his bat, like, especially when he was in Detroit, like, I i don't know if everyone knows, like, how hard it is to hit home runs there. It's just massive. And he was, like, the ultimate doubles guy there. Um he may have even like led the league in doubles or something ridiculous like that. I know Nick's going to fact check that. Um, and he would have hit a ton of home runs there. He had an injury season in 2022. That's why his numbers dipped and he ended up getting non-tendered because the Tigers really didn't want to spend the money. They weren't going in any kind of direction. They had a new front office. That's why he was moved on one year, prove a deal with, with Washington. And he had, he hit well. And at times it was a little bit streaky and the power especially can be a little bit streaky, but overall he's a good hitter with a great approach at the plate. He'll draw walks. I think he's about a 9.2% walk rate or something around there. Um, he's just a damn good hitter is really what he is. And I think that the Reds got another bat that they can put in, you know, in the middle of the lineup to second part of the lineup, you know, depending on how things shake out and, I love the move. I really do. In uh, 2021, he led all the major leagues with 42 doubles. So, yeah, I mean, right on with that. Since 2020, 110 WRC plus, 111 doubles, 11 triples, 58 home runs, uh, 8.9 F4 during that period of time. So um, I think I saw that last year he was projected he would have hit 30 home runs in Great American Ballpark. Um, so he ended up with 22, would have been 30 in Great American. I've already got an article out on it. So if you all can help pay my bills and just click on the article out there, you can read all about him. Look at Clay. Hell yeah, Clay. Where's that at? 
JustBaseball.com, a multimedia platform that covers the entire MLB. I'm going this to is it right now. This is sickening, Claiborne. Come on. Get all your MLB Come news on. for 29 teams at JustBaseball.com and then get your Reds baseball news from Chatterbox Reds. Right. Bring the Athletics Clay Twitter account back. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad on my mental health. It's bad on theirs, too. Go ahead, Nick. You want to knock that out? Yeah, this is uh, from from Bryce Spalding. Um, talk a little bit about what uh, Craig just said about how he's expected for 30 home runs last year. I mean, if you look at his spray chart here, um, you know, Bryce, as Bryce points out, a lot of uh, doubles and uh, doubles turning into home runs and uh, that kind of stuff. And uh also, if you go even a little bit further back, back in 2021, he would have had 27 home runs at Great American Ballpark. So um, he he probably has a lot more power than I think a lot of people might think, especially as it maybe translates to uh, uh, to Great American Ballpark. But look, this is just another nice player. I, I you know I don't I don't know how high his ceiling really is. I don't think he has a like a super high ceiling to where you know he's going to be a guy that that kind of is like an all-star, like like could could perform better than he has, but I I also don't see a very um low floor either. Like I, I think he's gonna be at least an average hitter, and an average hitter is valuable. Yeah, I listen, it all comes down to um it, it all comes down to depth, I think, to a certain extent, right? Like that's the that's the biggest piece of all this is that you're just adding another major league caliber player to the roster and what do the res decide they want to do moving forward in regards to to kind of the 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 proverbial window that people want to talk about and things of that nature they've shown that they're willing to go out and get some guys and they're going to make a push for 24 to be a year that they're gonna that they're gonna try to to compete and try to win a, a division now how hard they push we'll find out and i think ultimately it comes down to to uh what they decide to do and <laughs> I assume we're laughing based off the fact that uh, rookie of the year over there, Jonathan India, looks like a damn. No, uh, I'm not laughing at that. Uh, what are you? More breaking news: Nick Zell just signed with the Washington Nationals. Good for him, man. <laughs> Two million dollars plus a million in performance bonuses. Good for him. Are you telling me we want to see those pay three million for him? Yeah. No. Two million plus incentives. No, I think it comes down to Craig. I think I think. Listen, it takes uh, takes two to tango. So, so, listen, these guys don't want to come here. Some of these guys just don't want to come here because ultimately, you know, they they want to play. I mean, that's that's the thing. Uh, I think Nick Senzel wants to play, and that's that's an opportunity for him to to get at bats and and uh, you can say whatever you want. We can make fun of it. We can laugh at it. Uh, Nick Senzel, it wouldn't shock me if Nick Senzel was an average or maybe I'll give him a little bit of above average player in the major leagues next year. It's just unfortunately for the Reds in the way in the way they're positioned right now, it just doesn't fit. It's the same concept with Joey Votto a little bit, you know? Joey Votto could be serviceable for somebody. I I I I don't have any doubts that Joey Votto couldn't possibly go out next year and be a serviceable player. It's just that where the Reds are at, Nick said this a thousand times. If he goes out the first three weeks and Joey Votto's not good and he's terrible, do you want to put yourself as a franchise to have to cut Joey Votto like DFA Joey Votto? Like no, the risk the risk of, the risk of that happening is not worth the reward of him being a ninety five having a ninety five OPS plus and you can hang on for the rest of the year. I just want to Sorry, say real, this is real, old news, but did you all? They just tweeted out the contract for Candelario. A uh, three-year, forty-five million contract, with an additional option for a fourth year at fifteen million as well. For who? For Candelario. God bless. Yeah. So fifteen a year, but I will say, have you ever seen a prettier spray chart than that? Like that thing was the switch hitting spray chart. Beautiful. I mean, that, that is well. It's also money. you got to rem remind. Or remember, he's a switch hitter, so it's not right. One hundred percent, all fields at all times necessarily. But yeah, he's just a damn good hitter. That's less money than Mike Mustakas got. 
And, you know, I mean, we're hoping <laughs> Candelario could be a lot better than, than Mike Moustakis. But, I mean, like, that's I, – I, I know, like, that people might look that at that moves. contract – and be like, oh, that's a lot of money. Oop. Well, it's less than Mike Moustakas got. So, and and baseball contracts have gone up since 2020. So, I, it, it might In, feel inflation. like a little bit, yeah, but I, I don't think it is. One, and we can put all the stock we want into projections and everything like that. For what it's worth, MLB trade rumors had him projected as the 13th best free agent with a four-year, 70 million dollar deal. So, some may say we we got a bargain here. So. I, I just don't think it really matters that much in a non-salary cap sport. And you can say the Reds have their own salary cap and whatnot, but like this deal lines up with arbitration, you know, for a lot of these players. Like it's it's not like they're all gonna be free agents next year and we just signed, you know, forty five million dollars on the books. That's gonna hamper things. I, I don't see it that way. I saw that number and thought, yeah, that's fine. You know, it didn't shock me or anything. One one other kind of thing to kind of think about here with 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 the Can Candelario signing is, um, he, s some of these the players on the on the Reds current roster, um, have drastic platoon splits, and I, and I don't think we necessarily everyone I think knows Benson, Fraley, uh, those guys you know, the two lefties. Friedel's kind of proven that he can hit both, or at least he he did last year, but. Guys like like Spencer Steer was not necessarily a great hitter against right-handed pitching. Last year he had a 108 WRC plus against right-handed pitching. But if you look through his minor league stats, most of his value came against left-handed pitching. So I, I just think even let's just say everyone miraculously is healthy. This gives you a chance to play matchups a little bit more and and uh you know on, on a nightly basis where you, know, you rotate, you know, like Steer McLean, um CES, uh, Marte, those guys rotate taking a day off against right-handed pitching. And then, you know, the lefties take off a day against right-handed pitching. And you can kind of rotate and, uh, you know, I think be able to match up a little bit better. And uh, I, I just think it'll, you know, it'll make your lineup deeper on a, on a nightly basis. Yeah. Hey, listen, there's some crazy, there's some crazy opportunities that exist for the Reds that, you know, I mean, we could do a, we could do sports talk for the next thirty minutes. That would be, that would be hilariously absurd, and 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 then uh, maybe maybe it wouldn't be worth bringing up. But to sit here and suggest, you know, I I I'm, and I am not going to do this because I don't want to. Um, I don't want people to think we're being somewhat serious here. But it's not out of the realm of possibility that that um, that one of these young guys moves. Uh, whether it be our second baseman, whether it be our shortstop, or whether it be our third baseman, that one of those guys moves from their position as well and goes um, to an outfield spot. <clears throat> not, I'm not suggesting that I would. That's what I'm hoping for or want because I still would like to see those guys um, progress, and I want to give the young guys an opportunity to be infielders first. But let's not also act like two of those guys couldn't move to a corner. Uh, one of those guys definitely could play wherever the hell he wants in the world, in my opinion, but we're not going to go down that path yet. One of them can move to a corner outfield spot tomorrow, and I'd feel comfortable about it. Um, and maybe you could convince me that um, Matt McClain could, but I don't think that that's going to happen. But the, I, I just want to bring that up as well, of sitting here saying, let's not get ourselves in a position where we think we have to slot these guys into certain spots. Let's let it all play out. He's a major league talent. We'll figure it out after. We'll we'll figure it out later to a certain extent. That's all I'm saying. Nick, you when was the last time upset about Candelario in the chat? <laughs> Nick, when was the last minutes. time the Reds had two switch hitting infielders? Couldn't tell you. Do you know the Alejo answer? Lopez and Astrubal Cabrera? Oh. Estrubel, he was real good. I think he was what 0 for 30 to start his career with the Reds, and then he got cut. Yeah. Something like that. That was magical. That was a ma oh wait, I'm being too loud. I'm being I'm getting the signal. I'm being too loud. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I'm being too loud. I gotta go. Hey, He's I, uh, you to be I'm, quiet. I'm sorry. I, I I I wasn't I wasn't quiet enough, unfortunately. There. Uh I, I'm getting the signal. Hey, everybody have a great night. Uh, I'm very happy for Nick and Trace. This is what they wanted. They wanted Jonathan Indy on a first class ticket out of Cincinnati. Uh, I don't know where they sh they're shipping him off to. I guess you'll have to 
you have to tune back into Chatterbox Reds. Uh, Clay, bring back uh, Chatterbox, Chatterbox, or not Chatterbox A's, uh, just regular A's. Just bring bring back the A's account. Uh, and Craig, I love you. I gotta go, guys. We'll see you later. I'm getting I'm getting yelled at. Good night. I'm getting, I'm getting yelled at. All right. But but yeah. anyways, I don't know if either three of you, if any three of you have something to add to that. I, I just, you know, hey, you never know what's going to happen, man. They did put CES in right field, uh, I believe, in AAA to try it out. Um, I talked to RM Layton, who does the prospect stuff at Just Baseball, uh, before Marte debuted. And he had mentioned that he could see that as a path, a corner outfield spark from, from Marte at some point. Like, not saying they should do it or anything, but like he had mentioned, you know, that's somebody who could probably fit out there. And um, so that's really the only thought I put into it. Of course, Matt McLean played outfield sub in college, but hasn't really been an emphasis since. Um, I mean, but like you said, Trace, like it's one of those teams, man. It's they've got a lot of players that can do a lot of different things and a ton of athletes that may not have done those things yet, but certainly could if they put in an off season to do so. I also don't want to overlook Condelario's experience. I mean, he brings seven plus years of major league experience to a ball club who has, I think, not a single infielder with more than like three years of experience, at least on the current roster. So, I mean, we lose the veteran presence in Joey Votto. And so there was probably a desire by the Reds to go out and add some veteran leadership to this squad as well. Um, especially if you're really looking to make a push. Now, Condelario hasn't been on a ton of competitive teams, but in terms of being in the league and being a professional, having seven plus years, including what five of them around Miggy, um, certainly could potentially give you an opportunity to give some leadership to this young squad. Yeah, and I see a lot of people in the chat worried about. Reds trading young players, or I, I don't think the Reds are going to move Marte to another position. I think Clay was just suggesting that as a possibility. I, I don't think yeah, that is all that was that I have discussed it before a year and a half ago. I don't think any of that's going to happen, and I don't think that they should move. To me, it's the rich got r- richer, they had a really good infield and they added a really good player to their infield. I don't think that they're going to be making drastic changes or anything like that. Um, you know, Trace gave the warning. We don't think these things. We're just ta- going to mention them before we got in there. But I can understand where people will hear differently. Well, I just think really quickly on this. I, I just think that someone tomorrow is going to wake up. They're going to see that the Reds signed a guy that plays third base. Right. That 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 is inevitably going to happen. And a casual fan is going to ask the question. Well, what are they doing with these young guys, Marte? I'm just saying that, you know, before we sit here and we pin these guys in as every day, whatever position you want to put them at, let, let's let all just realize that there is some flexibility here. It's not like these guys can't possibly move. That's all I'm saying. And is that plan A? No, that's not plan A. But if plan A always worked, then Nick Senzel right now would be in the All-Star game last year and he'd be playing shortstop for your Cincinnati Reds. It, that's just not how it goes. So ultimately, let's just my point is is let's just let the chips fall where they may in spring training. Let these guys go and play. Let's figure out how many of these guys actually are big leaguers. I think we I think we all think that most of them are, but the fact is is we don't know yet. Um I do know this. Candelario is a big league, he's a big leaguer, and that's a fact. And We'll see where we'll see where everybody else falls in line as well. So, and if anybody is fired up about this, I would like to think that it's David Bell because if it it helps him out tremendously in regard to the concept of not always having to be super 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 platoony all the time for every single one of these infield or not an infield position, but every every single one of these position player uh, splits that are that are not all that great. So. You know, for people like me who can't stand the fact that the lineup changes every other day because based off who's pitching, this is this is a this is a neat, decent ad. I mean, you only need really one player to have an injury or to regress to have a spot for 
him every day. He can play first base. He can play third base. Steer can play all over. You have a, you, you've built a roster of guys that can that can move around. So you want to sign a guy like Candelario now and not get halfway through the season and be like, oh shit, we need a guy like Candelario because we see how expensive players cost at the trade deadline. You spend your money now, you sign your free agents, and it protects you into the season. Um, I'm not worried about at-bats. I think worrying about who's getting at-bats is the dumbest thing in baseball. Every single year, people worry about this, and 99% of the time, it solves itself. Um, you, you can't have too many good players. You can't have too many good hitters. Um, I think David Bell does a pretty good job of, of maybe his biggest strength is mixing and matching, but also doing it in a way where he seems to not have everyone hate each other. He he seems like Will Benson and Jake Fraley have been great hitters. And those guys were platooned. And I don't really ever remember hearing those guys complaining about it or creating any sort of issue. That's, I think, what David Bell is really good at is, is putting guys in the role, explaining to them what their role is, and getting them to buy in. And he's going to have to do even a better job because the Reds have more good players now. To me, the one thing with this also is like the Reds are not stopping right here. They don't sign Candelario and say, that's it. Like if anything, it's just a sign. You right. know, you sign a couple of bullpen guys, a guy who can flex into the rotation. Maybe he's a starter next year. But like none of those pieces were, this is it. We've checked everything off the list now and we're done. Like this is just one move, and it's an indication that they're spending money. And if they're if people who are complaining, that's too much. Well, it's just an indication that they're they have money that they're willing to spend. In my opinion, and I know that people are going to come back and say, "Oh, you know, look at the past, whatever." You really think that they're going to say Pagan, Martinez, Candelario, call it an off season? No, this is just one more move. I still think that they have not made their biggest move yet. I don't know what that's going to be, but th I, I don't see a team make these moves and say, that's it, and be done on December 7th. Yeah. This is a team that everybody's been blasting for not spending enough money and going out and putting a winner out there. They've spent, they've committed $87 million this offseason already, and we're not even to December 8th. Well, we're barely to December 7th now, right? So... I mean, this is still extremely early. The quote-unquote hot stove as a whole has been pretty cold up until now. There's a lot of big dominoes that people are waiting to have fall until they uh, really start to move. I think once you see Otani sign this weekend is is at least what they're saying. Um, you know, we'll probably start to see a lot more pieces fall in place depending on where he ends up. But for a team that had a payroll last year of I don't even remember what it ended up being 67 million or something like that, including Joey Votto's big contract. I mean, they're making moves. They're replacing that money that they spent on Joey Votto with other pieces that are actually going to be able to contribute to the puzzle. Um, so for all those people that wanted to see the Reds do something, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, oh, do something, do something, do something. Oh, but not that. Well, it all depends on if you think they're being if you think that they're being efficient with the money that they're spending, and that that's a reasonable debate uh, depending on which angle you want to take. I definitely think that if we're in the position where this franchise and this front office has decided that they think that, um, and and when I say this, I don't want people to get get upset at me talking about windows. I don't mean it in the sense that that you only have a chance to win in one window versus the next. What I mean by the 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 window that is let's just call it the next two years because I think if you put if you if you asked all of us which I guess I could but I'm just saying I think that if you made me say what year I feel the most confident that this team is is going to win this division I'm going to probably tell you 2025 um, and maybe 2026 and it doesn't mean that I want to sit here and and chant off the rafters and say hey we're not ready to win yet, so we don't need to do anything. You know, like, of course, of course we want to win. Of course we want to maybe, if we can't win the division next year, I'd like to think that we're five games better and they find themselves in a playoff situation and maybe you can replicate what the Diamondbacks did. And who the hell knows, maybe you get lucky and you win the whole damn thing. I don't know. But my main point to what I'm saying is it appears based off the moves that they're making 
that they might genuinely think that they have their core and th and that core is ready to play. Like they might say, you know what? Ellie De La Cruz is a dude. You guys can say whatever you want, but we've seen enough. He's a dude. He's going to play shortstop next year, every single day. And he's going to be an all-star and he's going to be one of the best players in major league baseball. And Oh, by the way, we think we have the best second baseman in major league baseball or arguably the best be uh, second base, in major league baseball, Matt McClain second base. And that's not even the best player in the infield because he's at third base that, I mean, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable thing to think. I don't know if they believe that. And I guess my point is, is when they keep making these moves, it makes, it leads me to believe that they might genuinely think that if they go out, and let's just say you said it earlier, Clay, that it's not our money. If they were to go out and get, and I know I'm, this is like maybe pie in the sky and I could be the Mr. Naive guy. If they go out and get a glass now, right? And they're like, you know what? We're just going to push it a little bit here. And we're going to show this fan base that we're, because there's some PR issues that the Cincinnati Reds have had of recent. It's not unfathomable to think that they might not just use this as an as an opportunity to try to win over a fan base or a portion of the fan base that is that has become a little disinterested because they kind of reeled them back in last year without really needing to open up the checkbook, right? Like Ellie De La Cruz and that young roster was selling out games in the middle of the summer at 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 a great amount. And that was money they never expected. So my point to all of this rambling is it wouldn't shock me in the slightest if they went out and got a glass now. And it doesn't mean that they think they have to go all in and win it next year. It's just an opportunity, if anything else, in my opinion, to see what you have next year, give it a chance. And also, and you can say whatever you want, but it is business after all. And that's not a bad PR move is to go out and spend extra and overpay for a, for a, a high risk, high reward glass now move. A little bit about the Candelario deal, too. Like, we don't really know what the market's looking like at third base. Like, Matt Chapman is not going to age well, in my opinion. He's going to get a deal that is is going to be way more expensive and way more years. And really, it's coming down to when you have a free uh, a a weak free agent class, especially in the infield, that's going to affect trade values. And that's how the market adjusts is if you can't sign one, you have to trade for one. And that gets more expensive. So the Reds it may right now look like, oh man, that's too much money. Let's just see how everything else plays out. We don't have to decide on December 7th about a contract, if it's too much money or not before he's taken an at bat. Like that's just not something that we have to talk about right now, or, or we can talk about it. We just don't have to make it to, you know, a decision on it. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, Trace, like, like you said, it's just, I feel like this is not the biggest move of the off season. I just don't feel that way. The Reds have, something that a a lineup that's has the chance to be special. And if this is all that they do, then I'll, you know, all the people that are always in my mentions and your all's mentions telling us how much the front office sucks. Like I'll agree with you if that's it, if they just roll out a team and don't do anything else. But like, I think that they're going to do something else here. Nick, got anything to add to that? No, I um, yeah. I, the the biggest thing with these three signings is they're all short term deals, which is what I've been saying all year. I want the Reds to be aggressive with short term deals, even if they overpay a little bit. Rather overpay for uh, a short term deal than than um, maybe underpay for something really long. But Martinez is two years, Pagan's two years, Candelario's three years. If any of these contracts completely don't work out, they're only a couple years. They're not going to set this franchise back, uh, you know, very far. And uh, uh, that's that's really important. Um, the headline the headline here is the Reds have spent eighty seven million dollars, and it's December seventh. They've spent eighty seven million dollars in free agency, and it's December seventh. That's the headline. Take it to the bank. That's all I got. Yeah, they did have pretty low payroll before they started. To be fair, um, and I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to downplay what you're saying. I'm just saying let's not let's not also act yeah, like they just didn't, didn't have a ton yeah, of money to spend. We were, we were told they're not going to spend anything. They're going to no. you know. That's because you're listening to you're listening to Dumb and Dumber. That's your fault. Um, listen, uh, three years, forty five million includes a club option, which is the biggest thing, right? It's a club option for the fourth year. That's a big deal. The player option for the fourth year, I would have been pissed. I'm not going to lie to you. Because like 
four yeah. four, four years for this guy. With all due respect, that might be one one too many for my liking. That in fact, I would even argue that we might be sitting around scratching our head and laughing about the fact that in three years uh, it might just be burning a little bit of cash and, and calling it a day. And 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 I hope not. I'm not saying we're DFA in the guy, but we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll find out, guys. Uh, I don't know if there's anything really left to add on on uh, on Jameer, but just a guy that uh, offers some depth, certainly extends some more question marks on what this team's going to do from the infield perspective. And then lastly, you know, for all those that are worried about this, that, and the other, sometimes it's hard to see the the, the, the full puzzle without all the pieces. And I don't think that this is all the pieces yet, as Clay's mentioned and Craig's mentioned. Give this front office, I would say, the rest of the front, uh, the rest of the uh, – the, the off season to show us maybe what their full plan is. Um, because if they already, let's just say they already have some kind of uh, a plan for a guy like Jonathan India, this it always goes back to him, but I, I, it, I would be shocked and it would be hard pressed for me to believe that they haven't had extended talks with a significant amount of, of suitors for Jonathan India dating all the way back to last trade deadline and they probably have a pretty good feel on what they can get in return. And my guess is they're probably using what they think they can get in return to maybe leverage that up against a, a, another deal to allow them to possibly get something else that we want, which is starting pitching. We're not going to be able to get rid of Jonathan India and get starting pitching for what you've always mentioned, Nick. There's not going to be a team that thinks they can win now, which is a win-now move with getting Jonathan India, and them trade away a starting pitching piece. But you could make the case that if they're able to get some prospects back, leverage those prospects to either deal those specific prospects or deal prospects that you think that you're basically going to replace out of your own farm system for somebody else. That's how you could do that. So let's just be patient, you know, show a little bit of a little bit of restraint on the idea of acting like, oh my God, they went out and signed a first baseman or a third baseman, and we 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 still don't have a starting pitcher. We don't have an outfielder. Just pump the brakes. We got a big leaguer. He didn't cost any prospects. And all it was was Bob's checkbook, which everybody wants to spend anyways. So, uh, Last thing, unless you guys have anything else, shout out to no. uh, Adam for the Super Chat. Thanks for going live on a Wednesday night. I think it's Thursday morning now, Adam. But uh, uh, no, I appreciate you and your Super Chat. Uh, we'll always try to go live after uh, big news breaks. And then big CR guy. My excitement for this Reds team is like Elliot profiting in sports betting. Go Reds. Love you guys. So shout out to you two guys. Thanks for uh, supporting us. All right. Well, this is a wild night. Um, wild night. I mean, we, 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 went, we went off the air around, uh, like I said, 1130, and then went right back on air around 1 o'clock in the morning. So thank you to all of you, Clay, Greg. Jumping on here, being crazy Reds fans, trying to uh, to enjoy what is Jameer Candelario. I hope that's how you say that kid's name, by the way. Jamer, Jamer. Candelario. Jamer. 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 Gamer. I'm just going to call him yeah. Gamer. Now. Jamer the Gamer. That's right. If nothing else, let this uh, serve as reason and proof why you should be subscribed to Chatterbox Reds and to Chatterbox right. Sports. And turn on your notifications on Twitter. I mean, literally 1.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nick Kirby, Trace Fowler, Clay Snowden, live on YouTube at 1.17 in the morning, talking about the signing of Jamer Candelario, baby. Turn on those notifications, subscribe to the channel, drop a like. Right. Just wait until they get done after these. After do a one hour and 47 minute show <laughs> right before oh what a night all right let's uh figure out how to turn this into a podcast <laughs> good luck nick i i feel bad for you brother see you guys all appreciate right. it all right see you chat love y'all ridiculous that all of you are are in here by the way i i know we get you get tired of us saying this you get tired of us saying this i'm not i'm not i don't give a tail if you care or not i don't care what you think about this thank you this is absurd, and I don't know what we say that keeps you around. Maybe you're just bored. You got nothing better to do, but the reality is is that um, 
the reason that we do this at two o'clock in the morning to a certain extent is that there's 150 people here in the chat. I don't know what's going on. I mean, we all love Reds baseball. Yeah, but some maybe we might all need to check into a, uh, to it too. I won't say it. I'll probably get canceled the way that things go in the world. But anyways, Nick, you take it over. Craig, I love you, buddy. Thanks for coming on at uh, two in the morning. Craig, tell us to hit the outro. Hit the outro, Nick.